Can you really have the perfect day in two Disney parks at once when time is limited? We're gonna find out. Today we are attempting to have the perfect day in both Disney's Magic Kingdom and Disney's Animal Kingdom to see if you can really have the perfect day when it's split between two parks and how to maximize when you're park hopping. Okay, good morning. It's 735, park opens at 8, and I have a very good feeling this morning because we are in the third row of Magic Kingdom parking. Like, the whole parking lot, we're in the third row. So I hope that that's a good sign that it's going to be chill. Obviously, there's probably a lot of resort guests and stuff, but fingers crossed that this is a good sign. Okay, friends, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I'm in the best mood today. I am so excited for this. Um, so we're starting here at the TTC. If you don't know, that's the Ticket and Transportation Center. And if you're coming to Magic Kingdom, that's where you're going to park. And then there's two ways, because you're not officially at the park yet. There's two ways to get over there, sometimes three, but you can either take the ferry boat or the Magic Kingdom monorail. You can also get to Epcot from over here, and then occasionally they will run buses as well. But today it's cold, <laughs> and I'm honestly really chilly. I have on leggings and a sweatshirt. I almost brought a jacket and then I thought I was being dramatic. And no, it's actually really cold today. And the high is only like five degrees higher than it is right now. Hopefully the sun will warm us up. All of that to be said, I'm not taking the ferry boat because the wind is like ice. So we're doing monorail today, but we're walking straight up to the monorail, which is pretty crazy. Okay, here we are. Park opens in about seven minutes and my Tron group has already been called, which is gonna throw off my whole rope drop strategy, but that's fine. We're all about flexibility here. So we're gonna just play it by ear today, see what happens and I don't know, it's exciting to do that sometimes. Um, for our rope drop, so this morning I was gonna do Adventureland because I love doing an Adventureland suite. However, my trying boarding group got called before the park even officially opened, and I've got about 45 minutes until it ends. That being said, I just don't want to risk it because if you don't know, if you miss that Tron boarding group, you don't get on it. Like, that's your only option. So I'm going to maybe do like Space Mountain and then hop in line for that. Alrighty, so it's saying 10 minutes for Space Mountain, so we're just gonna go ahead and give it a shot. I was gonna use this for a lightning lane later, but if we can use it for something else, even better. All right, already inside. Basically, not a living soul in here for the most part. And it literally is only 10 minutes because that's how long it's taking me to walk up to the, to the ride, which is very exciting. Smashing baby! Okay, just finished on Space Mountain. I absolutely love this ride. It is one of my favorites in all of Disney World. However, ironically, this is not even my favorite Space Mountain. I have the privilege to say I've been on three of them. This one, the one in Disneyland, and the one in Hong Kong Disneyland. And I'd say my favorite is still Disneyland, but Hong Kong Disneyland was very cool because it was Hyper Space Mountain. And if you want to go see what that looks like, you can go check out our perfect day in Hong Kong Disneyland, which is up on the channel right now. Okay, next up, because we're back here, we're just gonna go ahead and do our Tron Light Cycle Run Virtual Queue. So if you don't know how to do that, you can get on Tron one of two ways. You can either grab a free virtual queue at 7 a.m. or 1 p.m., or you can purchase an individual lightning lane. So either way is a good option. One is a bit more guaranteed. If you purchase it, you know what your time is and you don't really have to sit and wait on it. You can kind of plan your day around that. Or you can use the free virtual queue, which you do through the My Disney Experience app. Both are really great, but also the only way you're gonna ride it. This is literally euphoric to me. I am so excited that this is not gonna take too much time. Now, fun fact, if you come later in the day, uh, I got really lucky, I was in the third boarding group today. It can literally take up over an hour of your time. It's taken me that long before using the virtual queue. Now that's not always the case. There have been times like right now that I'm just walking straight through, but just kind of prep for it to take a little bit longer. So that way if it does, you're not really missing out on something. Um, just kind of give yourself that wiggle room. on Tron, 
I love that spot. It's so fun. And also, I know it's shorter, but Quincy made the point of like, if you had to sit on the bikes for longer than you do, it's not comfortable at all. We both have been stalled on it before, and it kind of hurts. It's not super comfortable. So I'm not upset. I understand why it's shorter. Okay, so I had told myself that I was gonna just do Tomorrowland and then maybe grab some breakfast, um, but it's still fairly early. And I am here on the day of a Mickey's Very Merry Christmas party, um, which is tonight. So that means Magic Kingdom closes at six, which is why we're park hopping today. Um, and I think that you can kind of tell it's a party day. Park's been open for about 30 minutes. It's still fairly slow. I'm not 100% sure that Jingle Cruise will still be five minutes when I get over there, but that's gonna be my goal. Um, the crowds will pick up throughout the day, but that's one of the best tips that we have is if you're not doing a Christmas party, um, coming to Magic Kingdom on the morning of a Christmas party is actually really nice. It's pretty slow. Now I will say you don't get the fireworks, you have less time in the parks, but you can also do a lot more with your rope drop and things like that. So I am here on what is like my first perfect day alone. And one of my favorite things about solo days, if you've never taken one, you get to do whatever you want. You don't have to worry about anybody else. You get to eat what you want. You get to do what you want, do the rides you want, skip the rides you want to skip. And no one's there to tell you no. I really wanted a Joffrey's coffee because they have their Christmas flavors out right now and I've not had one yet. And normally, if I'm with a group, I'm like, no, it's fine. I don't need to cross the park a million times just to get a coffee. But you know what? I'm by myself today. And if that's what I wanna do, I can do that. Okay, we finally made our way over to Adventureland. It only took me a few minutes to get over here, but I'm like, I have a high pace today. I'm a little fry speedish, if you will, because I don't know, five minutes for Jingle Cruise sounds too good to be true. And we're about to find out if it is true. So everyone manifest with me now. Okay, so it's saying 20 minutes now. I'm gonna risk it because the lightning lanes are all the way to three o'clock today. And I wanna be out well before three to head on to our next adventure. So I'm gonna try it. So if you have never been to Disney World during Christmas time, or you just don't know what Jingle Cruise is, the Jingle Cruise is the Jungle Cruise, but Christmas version, which is very fun. Uh, has Christmas themed jokes, a lot new decor, some just Christmas nods. They do this every single year, and it's one of the few Christmas overlays that you can actually see open during the day and not just during parties at night. One of the other ones is Journey to Imagination with Figment, where they put a sweater on Figment. You don't want to know what's in there. Welcome aboard the world famous Jingle Cruise, folks. My name is Skipper Trey, and I'm going to be your skipper today for about as long as we make it. Now, on the left and the right, you just saw some large and sexy guys. Uh, as we call the Amazonian Humbugs. Now, if you listen closely, maybe it's the catch for baby call. Let's give it a listen. Ah! Yeah, those are the Amazonian Bah Humbugs, folks. <laughs> <laughs> So please put your hands together for the one, the only, the best, I'm on water! Not to worry though, if I'm not mistaken, this temple is actually Santa's workshop! Yeah! Hey, let's head inside guys, keep your eyes open for anything good in here. I'm gonna keep my eyes closed. So we just finished Jungle Cruise, Jingle Cruise. It's so good, I love this ride. And it's just a fun to like get to hear some new jokes. Something new is always exciting. Now, there are two things that I think would be really cool if we could go ahead and do, and then maybe break for breakfast. One of them is Haunted Mansion. Supposedly, it's only 13 minutes, which if you know, that's a very, very, very good sign. Now, wait times are so great this morning. Really, I should have gone to Big Thunder Mountain just now, because it's only 10 minutes. And instead, I'm walking over here. And it's like, there a real reason that I'm doing that? No, but you know what? It's a solo day. Do what you want. Okay, it says 13 minutes and it's 9.01. So the park has been open for over an hour, barely, but still. And it's saying 13 minutes. And if you don't know, that means it's a walk-on. So anytime you see 13 minutes for Haunted Mansion, it's definitely a good time to go check it out.
today was successfully haunted. Pretty excited about that actually. Um, the wait times are still looking crazy. I feel yeah. like I'm, I'm like actually asking myself like maybe I should stop so I can use Genie, but at the same time, it's only 10 minutes. So I think I'm gonna walk over towards Big Thunder Mountain and then maybe decide, or maybe I should go to Fantasyland. <sighs> this is actually a very hard decision. Okay, pals, decisions have been made currently, and this might be a mistake, but I feel so good about what we've already done this morning. But currently, lightning lanes are looking like almost all of them are readily available. I already grabbed my first lightning lane this morning at 7 a.m. for Peter Pan's flight, which we will be doing in about 20 minutes. And that is perfect because Right across the way, it looks like the princesses are only a 15 minute wait, which they can get pretty, pretty high wait times. And it's a perfect day. So I wanna to try to do a little bit of everything if we can. So I'm gonna go hop in line for the princesses because their lightning lanes are getting further and further out. So might as well take advantage of this. So let's look, Princess Fairy Tale Hall, that's where you're going to go meet the princesses. It looks like Tiana and Rapunzel are only 15 minutes. On the other side is Cinderella and Elena, and they were a little bit higher at 20 minutes, which really is not bad at all. But we've got stuff to do, so I figured I'll go with two of my favorites instead of only one, even though Elena's cool. She's just not my favorite. Hi, good, how are you? Thank you so much. I even did braids today. A little satchel for Flynn, braids for you. Just mixing it up. Not yet, but I'm waiting to see. Maybe something out of a frying pan I can go grab for breakfast. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, do watch out for chameleons if you put snacks. Okay. Yes, they always find their way into satchels, eat some of the snacks. They leave chameleon sized bites out of everything mm -hmm. and a few crumbs. And I also think they like to be able to be carried from one place to another. Oh, that makes their sense. little legs in a bit time. How are you today? I'm doing mighty well. I hope it's a little day where I can bring folks together through a bit of food. Exactly. I have to stop by for some gumbo too. Oh, that sounds wonderful. And it's cold today, so that would be great. <laughs> well, it's always a perfect dish for any day, but I'm sure today will be an extra special day for it too. So just met Rapunzel and Tiana and literally almost cried. Not when I met them, but watching the kids in front of me meet them was just so sweet. And there was a little girl and she like would not let go of Tiana. So they just sat for a few minutes and just hugged and were together and I literally wanted to cry because that's just That's what it's all about like that's that's it. That's what it's all about and it really I just loved it And that's another thing like as far as solo tips if you're gonna solo travel to Disney World One of the best parts about Disney World alone is like people watching you might feel a little bit uncomfortable at first But just kind of like observing what's going on around you and seeing those special little moments makes it even more exciting to come by yourself because it's things you would never notice and it's it really is special just watching other people have those experiences too all right so it is time for our first lightning lane of the day which is peter pan's flight so timing worked out beautifully for that peter pan's flight is where you take a sky high ride over neverland in a magical boat and you see a lot of your favorite characters and i love this one decided just right now in this moment that this is one of the most dangerous rides in all of Disney World and why is that you ask it's because of the sails the plastic sails when you sit down if you're like an adult sized person which most of us are you might hit your head really hard like I did it really hurt and I was like oh well that's just on me like I did that because I was silly and I just I did that well then the ride stopped for just like half a second but as it started, it jerked me so hard backwards <laughs> that I hit my head again. And now I have what some might consider a small headache. So Disney, if you could just add some like cushioning back there, that would be really cool. And I personally would really appreciate it. Now, I think we have been waiting long enough. So I'm gonna grab some breakfast over here at the Friars Nook. They have lots of options and it ends in about 30 minutes. So I might as well go ahead and grab some. Friars Nook actually does have a mobile order, which you can get through the My Disney Experience app, which allows 
emails, you just give the lines and oftentimes can be really, really helpful. However, for breakfast, there were only about two people in that line, so it was much faster for me to get in line and them immediately serve me than to place my mobile order, wait the 10 minutes, and then all that good jazz. Now, I got one of my favorite breakfasts in all of Magic Kingdom and it's these. Now, because we have limited time, I don't wanna take up too much time eating here, but these are the sausage and gravy tots. It's just sausage gravy over tater tots, and it's so incredible, and I love it so much. And it's so perfect for a cold day like this. Now, you can get cold brew here. You can get the Joffrey's Chicken Jamaican Cold Brew. I did not get one today because I really want a hot holiday coffee from Joffrey's, so I'm gonna do that later, but pro tip, you can grab that here. Okay, friends. So two things, breakfast was super yummy, warming. And also I'm hanging out in the chat right now. I can't do it for a long time because you and I are hanging out right now today. But that's one thing, every Saturday and Tuesday we have premieres of our new big videos over on allears.net here on our YouTube channel. And we chat with you guys and it's so much fun and I love to be able to do it. So always check those out if you can. Okay, next up, I'm headed to the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. I am using a lightning lane for it today. It was 30 minutes when I made my lightning lane. It's down to 15 again, um, so not bad at all. But I have a lightning lane, so I might as well use it. If you ask me, you'll never reach that tree. another lightning lane this time for Buzz Lightyear I'm gonna slowly start making my way back to Tomorrowland so we can finish everything in that area and then also <laughs> get that coffee I've been talking about but it's not a perfect day at least for me without going on <laughs> the mad tea party and no one's here Doing that post breakfast was probably not like my smartest move in the world, but that's okay. It's a lot of fun and that one almost always has a low wait time, so if you ever see it over like 10-15 minutes, don't get in line for it. It'll drop. Go back later. Okay friends, we're back in Tomorrowland and this time we're gonna head to Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin, another personal favorite of mine and I think a fun must do here in Magic Kingdom. It is a Buzz Lightyear themed shooting game and I get very competitive on it and I have a lightning lane for it so very excited. Now this wait time is about 35 minutes so you can see things are slowly starting to pick up but still not too too bad. hero but I was pretty close but I'm not as good when I have to film that's just true so I want to go on the people mover and I can't tell if no one's in line or if it's closed so we're gonna find out oh my goodness literally just no one's in line that's so exciting so people mover takes you on a high ride over top of Tomorrowland sees lots of different views that you normally don't get to see and it's just a lot of it's a lot of fun but it's very relaxing Okay, weird comment, but I almost wish I hadn't ridden it because I forgot how cold it is today. So, I hope we don't get frozen on this. This is the TTA Blue Line. It's the wind that's icy. Oh, the Joffrey's line is so low. And I'm gonna stand in it. Whether you have one eye or nine, take the time to see this show. It's been a pleasure to have you aboard. And even though we're concluding, this is always my favorite part. Okay, I'm very cold after the people mover. And as I was going over Joffrey's kiosk, um, the line looked very long, very long. And I was like, no, don't waste your time on that. And then I got so cold because of the wind. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go wait for it. Okay, I got it. And I only waited like 12 minutes, so it really wasn't that bad. It just looked worse. Now I think I'm gonna mosey on over back towards Frontierland, Adventureland vibes, and then maybe we'll catch the noon parade. And I'm gonna sip on this the whole time because it's 
so windy and I'm cold. Our favorite place to watch it is here in Frontierland and then I think ride Big Thunder and Pirates and head out of here. I think it's been a very good day. And also I decided to do this because I want to sip on this slow because um, it's warming me up. Just finished the parade. It's so good. Now I normally am a parade skipper to be totally honest with y'all. But that's mainly because I don't love standing in the sun and letting the heat beat down on you while you wait on it. So I love watching it up here because you get it as soon as it starts at noon, which if you watch it on Main Street, it does not get to Main Street until like 12, 15, 12, 20 ish. Um, so you get it immediately. It's over really quickly. And right now it feels amazing outside. So I did not mind to sit and hang out. Now we have a lightning lane for Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. like really not too bad. Big Thunder was only 10 minutes, which I had a lightning lane, but it was only 10 minutes. Um, last I checked, Pirates is five. So it feels really, really good. And I think maybe that's one of our biggest tips. I kind of talked about it already, but coming on the morning of a party has been really, really nice because there's a lot more to do with fewer people. Okay, gonna head on to our last ride here in Magic, and that is the famous Pirates of the Caribbean. It's a slow-moving boat ride that takes you back into the time of the pirates, and you're gonna find some of your faves, like Jack Sparrow and Barbosa. And it's a lot of fun and a classic, and everybody knows the smell. If you've ever smelled it before, it'll never leave your brain. <laughs> The gentlemen want the rum! Don't ya, boys? Hey! Here's tell, tis only me what's got the goods. <laughs> Keep still. I'm studying the map. Okay, we have officially exited, but I'm not gonna take the monorail just yet because the place that I want to go is one of my favorite quick service lunches and we might have to walk this way to get to it and maybe it's at a resort and if you know as well you might already know where I'm going. Okay we made it over to Grand Floridian for one of the things that will just like warm my heart and soul. I wish we were going to Narcosis instead. We're going to Gasparilla Grill, which is the quick service here where our favorite mac and cheese in the world is. Now I was gonna mobile order it. I thought, oh, that's so smart. And then I wasn't paying attention. And the mobile order is like an hour out about. So we're gonna go hop in line. It will definitely be faster to get in line for that. Um, and then we're gonna take it back with us to the DTC and eat it in our car. Cause I don't wanna waste time cause we don't have as much time in Animal Kingdom but I'm very excited. That being said, mobile order is a great tool to use if you're trying to plan further out and you know when you wanna eat. Um, but if you're trying to do it on the fly for some of those busier spots, it might get kind of further out. Like I just had that happen to me. So kind of plan on that, keep your eye on it. And always remember that even if it's an hour out, you can still stay in line. You might not want to, but sometimes it is just faster, like this morning and now this afternoon. Goods secured. Now I will say that took longer than I had hoped, but we really love this mac and cheese. I'll eat it on the way, or at least like as I get into my car, just to save a little time. And it still was faster going in and waiting after ordering than it would have been to mobile order this um, by almost 30 minutes. So now we are gonna head back onto the monorail to the TTC and straight on to Animal Kingdom. Also, the gingerbread houses are out and this is the first time I've seen this years. Oh, it smells incredible in here, but we don't have time. This did take me too long and I will admit that. I'm the first to admit that. 
However, I'm very excited for this. I love it because it's just something different. We eat in the parks quite a bit. So anytime we can eat outside, I always appreciate it. And then also, I think this is a good time to just acknowledge that sometimes you're gonna forget that there's special stuff going on. Like the gingerbread houses at all of the resorts is gonna make the resort monorail busier, which I didn't even think about, even though I know that in the back of my mind. So always just kind of remember to double check what's going on around the resorts, around the parks. What are those things that could impact your day that maybe you're not thinking about? I'm back in my car. I'm finally gonna eat this mac and cheese. It's so creamy, ooey gooey, delicious, and I'm gonna eat it now. Now we are running behind <laughs> because of this to our park hop. So I'm gonna eat it, we're gonna talk about it, and then I'm gonna really fast finish it all off camera and not gross you out by how fast I eat it. And then we're gonna quickly go to Animal Kingdom. Mm, it was worth it. 100% worth the wait in my opinion. I love this stuff so much. It's just, it's higher quality than the rest of Disney World mac and cheese. That might sound crazy, but it really is. It's warm, it's comforting, it's super, super ooey gooey. And it just tastes like higher quality cheese as well. Also, I feel the need to PSA, don't eat and drive. It's distracted driving, especially if it's Gasparilla mac and cheese. That's just not, like if it's like a burrito, I'll give you that. But this is a little bit more complex. So just don't, don't do that. In an unprecedented series of events, I also found this big fluffy jacket in my car and it just keeps getting colder and my hands are like too cold to type. So I thought I'd bring it and then I was like really thinking about it and I was like, that's so weird. Mine's definitely hung up in my closet and it's because this is Quincy's. I'm discovering right now that it was in my car. Alrighty, so the first thing I'm gonna do is these show times do not go super late here in Animal Kingdom. I'd like to see at least one show today. So I went ahead and grabbed another lightning lane for Festival of the Lion King. That means I can get there closer to show time and still get a pretty good seat. Now, if you did not know, those lightning lanes are actually a little bit different for shows rather than how it's an hour for different rides. So for the shows, you have about 20 minutes um, to get there. So mine is from 2.30 to 2.50. And if you miss it, unfortunately, you just lose that lightning lane. So be aware of that. When you make one for a show, it is not a full hour. It is less time. Also, I'm seeing the Christmas puppets. Animal Kingdom has some of the neatest holiday stuff. And it's so different and so unique. And one of the most unique things is the animal holiday menagerie. And look how cool. I mean, it's just like true beautiful artistry with a live performer. Okay, we made it over just as the other show is letting out. So we have plenty of time and our lightning lane just started a few minutes ago. So we're doing well. First thing at Animal Kingdom is done. Festival of the Lion King. It just makes me want to cry every time. It doesn't matter how many times I watch it, especially if I'm feeling extra sensitive, which I didn't think I was, but it just makes me want to cry. It's so incredible. If you see one show at Animal Kingdom, I highly recommend this one. Now I will say Quincy does not like this one because the seats are like bleachers. So if you don't want to sit on that for 30 minutes, I understand. But if you want to see an incredible show, that's the one to see. Now our first lightning lane for here, which we actually booked a while ago, um, is about time to go head that way. So let's go to Pandora. We have made it into the Valley of Mawara here in Pandora. And there are actually two rides back here, but we are only going to do one for now. Um, and that is Navi River Journey, which is where I'm going to. Navi River Journey should probably be your highest priority if you're using Genie Plus in Animal Kingdom. Um, it's a slow moving boat ride. It's really, really 
beautiful, but it does not have a high capacity and it's really, really cool for kiddos. So because of that, there's normally pretty high wait times and the Genie Plus Lightning Lanes go pretty fast. Navi River Journey. The animatronic on that is incredible. I mean, I know that I said earlier I wouldn't wait a long time, and I wouldn't, but it is incredible. So now we are going to head over back kind of towards where we came from to Kilimanjaro Safaris because it will close earlier uh, than the rest of the park. So one thing that Disney still does uh, post-COVID that started with COVID is the character cavalcades. And look, it's Pluto. Here comes Pocahontas and Miko too. And she's in her winter gear today. Okay, here we go. We are back here for Kilimanjaro Safaris. It is a journey through the Africa's amazing wildlife. It does use real animals and real drivers, and it's so <laughs> neat. Now, like I said, it's about to close for the day, but it's only a 10 minute wait, which is one of the perks of being here uh, after two o'clock. A lot of people leave Animal Kingdom, they treat it as a half day park, but if you wanna see if it's really a half day park, I have a DAC Twice video up on the channel right now that you can go check out. Also, I think I just said, DAC twice. If you don't know, DAC is Disney's Animal Kingdom. on our successful safari. That was a good one. I love going towards the end of the day and in the very early morning because the animals are super active because it's not too hot. Now today it wasn't hot ever at any point. So it could have been like, you know, nice all day. But if you're here at any other time and it is hot, morning or the evening is gonna be best. One of my favorite rides in all of Disney World, Expedition Everest. I don't know if you've heard of it. Outdoor roller coaster, there's a Yeti. It's pretty big news over here, is closed and has been closed all day. So unlikely that we will get to experience that. But I think let's just kind of mosey around. I think it's time for maybe a snack or a drink and then maybe a show and dinosaur. I don't know. So because we've got some time, but we only have two really big priorities um, left on my list, I'm gonna do some things that I just really love. And one of those things is making a stop at Dawa Bar. And if you've been following us for a while, you're not surprised that I'm ending up here at all. Dawa Bar is a bar here next to Tusker House that has lots of really delicious options and one of our favorites, which is actually a jungle juice spiked beverage. So if you know what that is, it's hog juice and it's so good. Passion, orange, and guava and oh, my favorite drink in the world. Okay, so I got my favorite. Now they do have a prickly pear margarita that is actually really, really good. Now it is limited time. It is not always here, but if you see it here, definitely try it out if you like something like that. It is on the sweeter side, but this, is like liquid gold. Now, I need to pair it with something. And I know just the thing. Okay, I'm here with my most happiest things in the world. <laughs> First is the Ningumu Jungle Juice, which we've already talked a lot about a little bit, but just to tell you what's in it, it's Snow Leopard Vodka, Peach Schnapps, and the Tusker Famous Jungle Juice, which is that Pog Juice. And then down here is Mr. Kamal's Seasoned Fries and a Sriracha Mayo. Now, I'm, I love the Sriracha Mayo, I won't lie to you, but they recently changed this um, at some point this year. It used to be a ketchup and a mustard, but now it's sriracha mayo and I'm fine with it. And there's tables right in my favorite view in the world. And this is happiness and a perfect day. Okay, first I'm gonna try um, our jungle juice. Ningumu jungle juice. I struggle to say it. Cheers. Wait, be you ready? You're ready. Cheers. Mm. I love this so much. It is just juice. If you're someone who has the palate of they don't love alcohol, but they love something sweet. This is a great one. It's super, super sweet and just a little juicy. I love these fries so much. They have so much good seasoning. 
And I actually really do like the sriracha mayo. I know that is a little bit of a controversial opinion. Not a lot of people like the switch, but I actually really like it. It is Disney spicy, like Disney sriracha. It's not hot at all. Although if you are very averse to spice, you might notice some of it, but it's just good and creamy and these are incredible. And also you don't have to use the mayo. Just get some normal ketchup. They have that too. Also, just a pro tip, if you want great photos of the Tree of Life behind you with no one else, come down here. It's right behind Mr. Kamal's and it's so nice and no one's ever really here. Okay, we're finally moving on from our snack and drink portion. But look how pretty the lights are. Ah, it's one of my favorite parts, weirdly, about your light savings time this year is you can actually see it get dark in Animal Kingdom, which you can't always do. And it's slowly starting to do that now and the Christmas decor is just so, so pretty. Hey, remember when I waited in an almost 15 minute line for Joffrey's this morning? I don't. <laughs> Full transparency, I am skipping Cali River Rapids um, because I want to. Because look at what I'm wearing. You want me to get on a water ride? You guys wouldn't do that to me. I, I know that. So I'm not gonna do it. Perfect day. All right, friends, so we are back here towards Expedition Everest, which sadly is not opening today. Clearly, they've got games out front. And if you see cast members with games out front of a ride, it's, it's not opening, which is sadly no. She said, she said just right now there's still a chance. Um, absolutely not. If they're playing games, there's not. But one thing I was going to talk about with Expedition Everest in particular is if you're on that solo trip, utilize the single rider lines. That is like the biggest perk of a solo trip in my opinion. You can do it obviously if you're with a group, but you will get split up, which some people aren't totally comfortable with. So I personally love using that single rider line. Disney doesn't have a ton of them, but the ones they do have work pretty well, except Rock and Roller Coaster. Um, but Universal actually has a ton, which I highly recommend using. Okay, we're gonna wander around Dino Land USA, which sadly is probably closing in the next little bit. Although we have no confirmation on that. It's pretty much, you know, it's confirmed Dino Land's closing. We're just not sure when. I'm gonna wander through here, maybe go try to go in the past and find a dinosaur. I don't know. And maybe shop a little. Who doesn't love to shop on a perfect day? Okay, here we go. Dinosaur, one of the only rides in Disney World with a warning. So take that as you will, you and your kiddos. But you get to sit in a time wherever you go back in time. It is very dark. There are lots of jump scares and maybe some scary dinosaurs. <laughs> Get in, grab the iguanodon, and get out before that asteroid hits. Let's roll! This little one. Oliaramus. Buter, now what? Carnotaurus. That's it! Abort mission! Iguanodon. Forget it! Get them out now! Asteroid impact. Brace yourself! Okay, successfully went on dinosaur. However, half of it was down when I got in line. Like it, it went down while I was in there. And then I got stuck on it twice, which actually has never happened to me. Like at one point we were just sitting in pitch black. At the end, all the lights had gone off. You know, when you're going back through the lights, um, it was pitch black. And this poor baby boy next to me was so scared. And his mom and I chatted a lot and he did great. But for us to get stopped in the pitch black was just not great for him. So wasted a little bit of my time, but it's okay. We have two things left on our list. It's getting dark finally. And maybe we'll shop a bit too. I don't know, I just, I want an excuse to shop. Now on my way out, I'm not gonna buy anything today, but have y'all seen this collection? I'm so obsessed. This sweater and the keychain are my favorites but all of it is just so chef's kiss. It's incredible. Look how pretty Animal Kingdom is for Christmas. I was here on the first day that they started doing some Christmas decor, but I have not been back 
with it dark like this and all the lights lit up. Look at this. Great. When I focus the camera. Look how nice. Oh, it's, it just makes me so happy. It's so great. Okay, for one of our final stops tonight, I'm going to do it's tough to be a bug. And a lot of people are like, Emma, why is that a priority for you? And it's because I love this show. It is a great indoor theater show with lots of cool animatronics and bug eyes that you wear. Um, and it's hosted by Flick and he teaches you how tough it is to be a bug. And it takes place inside the tree of life. Now this one gets a little dark at times. And sometimes spiders fall over you, fake ones, but kiddos don't realize that they're not real. And they get a little nervous and a little scared in a horrible way. I love it. Like, I love the audience reactions to this one. to be a bug and it was a great crowd everybody was really either scared or happy to be there and both are very funny okay so basically everything on my list is done except for flight of passage which supposedly only has a 25 minute wait weirdly i wouldn't be shocked if it's lower and there is literally 45 minutes until the park closes so it's not like a long time you know it's not like oh it's 6.59 and it's down to that. It's like almost an hour. So very excited. I think this just proves why I love being in Animal Kingdom after two o'clock. No one's here, especially during slow season, which today feels slow. Maybe we're just lucky. I don't know, but let's go hop in line for Flight of Passage. Okay, well that was a lovely little surprise. So during the Christmas season, they do projections on the Tree of Life, just like they do um, on the castle over in Magic Kingdom, but they don't do it every single night. And I checked the website times today to see if they were doing it and it said nothing, <laughs> but clearly they just did it. Um, it's really, really cute. It's very different. It's not like a fireworks show. It's just a projection show all about Christmas and you see a lot of really beautiful animals and the projections are incredible. So I'm really glad we got to do that. Okay, and finally, one of my favorite parts of Animal Kingdom at night is Pandora in the dark. Look, everything just glows. There's literally glow in the dark paint and sidewalks. So here you can see it just a little bit better. It's just so pretty and like the sidewalks glow and the plant life glows. Everything is just covered in bioluminescence and it's lovely. And you don't really get to see this a lot, especially in the summertime, it's not dark enough. So look at it all, I love it so much. Okay, here we go. Yep, it says 25 minutes. We're gonna see if that's accurate. And even if it's not, this is our final ride of the night. So I feel pretty good about these plants. This is crazy, actually. Friends, we're walking straight through the forest. Like the whole forest scene, like straight into the lab, we're walking through that. This is crazy. And I have to give credit where it's due. This is totally a breed love tip to come at the end of the night rather than rope dropping in the morning, which wasn't an option for us, but this is something breed love has always said is like, go at the end of the night. I promise it's faster. And totally, totally he's right. Okay, <laughs> this is crazy, but the lab is also almost empty. Like there's people walking through, but there's not a line. This is so exciting. And I think I'm most excited because we didn't get in the line right at 6.59, like I had planned on doing. We got in about 30 minutes before the park closed. So the fact that we're just like walking through here <laughs> is crazy. Is everyone ready to fly?
on one of my favorite rides on a perfect day. It was so, so much fun. I hope you guys had a great day. I had such a fun time. This was truly the perfect solo day in my opinion. If you're gonna park hop, we got to do everything we wanted to do and our list was chef's kiss. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Now go check out our perfect park hopping day from Animal Kingdom to Epcot. Bye.